this car would make Goldilocks very happy, I'm sure. Car Obsession is proudly supported by Exchange My Car, Carly and Draggy. For a limited time only, use Car Obsession 10 to get money off with Carly and there's also a discount code for Draggy as well, which again is Car Obsession 10. All of the details are in the video description below. Hello guys, welcome back to Car Obsession and welcome to another point of view drive. This time I'm joined by the brand new Honda HRV Hybrid. So before I go for a drive, I want to give you a quick look around the car. This particular car is the range topping advance style and it's finished in this, in this gorgeous midnight blue beam metallic with a contrasting silver roof. I do hope you can see it. It is a very nice paintwork. The paint itself is a £625 option. The car as a whole would normally have a starting price of uh, £34,850. So we've got LED lights at the front body coloured grille, I've got 18 inch alloys which hopefully you can see, keyless entry and I've also got uh, LED lights at the rear, we've got a hands free power tailgate which normally works first time, there we go, the boot isn't the largest, uh, it is crammed with my filming crap but it offers 335 litres which is quite far behind some of its rivals and it is smaller compared to the last car because the uh, the battery for the hybrid system is under the boot floor anyway let's close that down like so so under the bonnet i have a 1.5 liter atkinson cycled petrol engine got the uh, lever just there and of course it is mated to an electric motor this car technically speaking has two electric motors but only one of them is responsible for drive the other one acts as a generator right where are we normally i find it first time i'm faffing about i do apologize there we go so there it is the 1.5 litre engine and you've also got the uh, electric motors as well as well as the um, ecvt which is a very clever system but you do need a kind of james may level of nerdiness to properly understand and explain it anyway that's that so it offers around 130 horsepower along with 252 newton meters of torque if you prefer that in pound feet that is 187. i'm sure you're not too concerned about its performance but this will hit 62 miles per hour in 10.6 seconds and the top speed is around uh, 110 miles per hour in regard to fuel economy that is 52.3 on a combined run and CO2, CO2 emissions are 122 grams per kilometer. Anyway, you came here to watch me drive the car, so let's do that. You've got the um, start button just there. Now, as you can hopefully see on the dash, the car has started in EV mode. So you've got three ways in the, which this car can be driven. By the way, I do like the fact that the uh, near side door mirror drops down when you pop it into reverse hopefully you'll see it go back up this bit is a bit bumpy so my head will move so apologies if you suffer from seasickness because you may feel nauseous so the hrv has got something that honda calls the immd and that's the um intelligent multi-mode drive are we good yeah Okie dokie. So again, you need a kind of James May level of nerdiness to explain it, but put simply, so let me get myself comfortable, put simply, there's three ways in which this, this car can be driven, and it's all automatic. You don't need to do anything, the car does it all for you, and it is very, very clever indeed. So you have EV only mode, which is pretty self-explanatory, whereby the car will only drive in EV. That normally happens in, a, in and around town, or when you first start the car up or when you're pulling away you can get ev only mode um, when you're on the motorway or the highway if you're watching this in america but that will depend on the state of the charge of the battery which is mounted under the boot floor as i mentioned now we do have the uh oh okay fair enough uh, we do have the uh, goodwood festival of speed so yes we do have some uh, traffic control and we might see some very nice cars as well so that would be an added bonus you have the hybrid mode 
in which the 1.5 litre engine is awoken, but it is not responsible for driving the front wheels, at least not directly. No, instead, the engine acts as a generator for the electric motor. Um, and last but not least, or actually, as well as offering power to the electric motor, any excess power from the engine is fed back into the battery. So this has two electric motors, one that drives the wheels and one that acts as a generator. So it is a rather complex system, but when you actually get to understand it, it's the theory of it, uh, the kind of main principles and functions, it's actually quite simplistic. Uh, yes, it's, it's very, very well engineered. And then that leaves engine only mode, which um, is, is used, sorry, my hands are on the wheel, silly thing. It's these country lanes that confuses most cars. Um, then you have engine only mode in which the car um, is obviously driving just using the engine. Oh, for God's sake. Yes, um, when you get to a certain speed, depending on the factors, the engine will take over and you have a, a clutch within the ECVT that will lock up and that is able to make the engine directly to the front wheel so the electric motor is disengaged and taken out of the system. However, there is a caveat to that. Let's say you're on the motorway or the highway, you're in engine only mode, but you want to perform an overtake, so you need an extra bit of power because the engine alone isn't, isn't particularly powerful. The clutch is able to disengage, which will re-engage the electric motor, and you get an extra bit of boost, an extra bit of power in which to perform the overtake. Now, as I may have mentioned, you can drive at faster speeds in the EV only, but only if you have enough charge in the battery. The battery isn't large, this isn't a plug-in, therefore, if, you, if you're driving at high speed, yeah, you will discharge the battery rather quickly. Now, I've used the term eCVT a few times, but don't think that that is a CVT that uses uh, pulleys or belts, no. In fact, this, is, this isn't really like a CVT at all because you have the engine which has a fixed gear ratio so that isn't variable and the gear ratio of, of the engine um, is similar to that of sixth gear in a manual car and then the electric motor that also has a fixed gear ratio so i suppose the reason why honda has called it an ecvt is because although it isn't continuously variable it is variable in the sense that you can either go from the electric motor or to the engine both of which have different um, fixed gear ratios i'm sure there's some boffins out there that will correct me if needed because i have made mistakes on the ecvt before but this time around, I did want to do a bit more research into it. And I have to say, it is a very fascinating and uh, complex system. But it is very well engineered, as you would expect from Honda. Although Honda isn't the only uh, brand to use an eCVT, but they do it in a slightly different way to companies such as Toyota, for example, where, where they use uh, planetary gears, which is a, a different kettle of fish and, uh, yeah, I will save that lecture for another day. Now, the first thing that struck me when I drove the um, HRV hybrid is just how comfortable it is. The damping is spot on because it's nice and compliant, so it means it's very wafty, but it isn't too boaty or floaty. So yes, the chassis is really well judged and balanced. The same goes for the steering. It's got a really nice natural weight to it. It's not too heavy, not too light. It doesn't feel overly assisted and it just feels natural. Yeah, it's a really good steering setup. So hats off to you, Honda. In regard to the way how the HRV hybrid drives, it is an effortless car to drive. As you may see, I've now slipped into EV mode because there's enough charge in the battery. But if I were to put my foot down, then the engine takes over. Now, one thing on that, this car is refined for the most part. But if I just slow down, I do have a car behind me, but I can slow down a bit. If I kick down on the accelerator, hopefully you'll hear, the engine note is rather gruff and coarse. It isn't very nice to listen to. And it does kind of remind me of that rubber band effect you get in a standard traditional CVT and that's where I've gone wrong before because I've kind of 
assume that this is a similar kind of setup when in fact it couldn't really be much further from the truth. There is a bit of road noise coming from the 18 inch alloys which are wrapped with uh, Michelin Primacy 4 tyres. Um, they are a width of 225, profile of 50 and a diameter of 18 of course, oh, very nice. Vantage Volante, beautiful. But yes, whilst the road noise is a bit louder than I would have, would have expected, for the most part, um, the HRV is a very quiet car to live with. I did do a sound meter test, and at 70 miles per hour on a dual carriageway, I was getting around 72 decibels, which from memory is a wee bit louder compared to other cars in this class I've driven. But yeah, it's not exactly a firework display in regard to noise. Now because the chassis isn't too floaty or boaty in its nature, you do have enough tautness to give you a decent amount of handling. It's never going to rival a hot hatch of course, but it's not trying to, so that would be a silly statement. But through the corners, you do get a bit of body roll, but it's well controlled. And the handling, I would say, is neat and tidy. It's, it's definitely competent for sure. Now, I touched upon the fuel economy earlier. In my experience, um, today I've been getting just under 48 MPG, uh, 47.8 to be precise. And if I go to Trip Computer A, uh, well, are we, I've been getting 45.8 MPG. So not too bad, not too bad at all. As I, as I mentioned, this is not a plug-in hybrid. It is a self-charging hybrid. If you're wondering how far you can drive on EV only, this morning I managed around half a mile before uh, the engine cut in. Yeah, the HRV, it is a really pleasant car to drive you get the impression that you could drive this on a longer distance without any real complaints yeah the comfort level is is really really good now in case you're wondering how fast this is oh a Toyota GR Yaris oh yes please I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. Um, yeah, in regards to how responsive this car is, it's not too bad, in all honesty. And there we go. It's pretty much to 16 miles per hour. Oh, oh. I apologise. I will get distracted. There are some beautiful examples of machinery uh, floating about because, like I say, uh, we do have the uh, festival of speed in full swing today. But yeah, the car is pretty responsive. Now, the advantage of using an Atkinson cycle engine is that it's more fuel efficient, but the drawback is they are less powerful. Now, if you want to know how, uh, if you want a, a, a more thorough explanation in regards to how an Atkinson cycle engine works, I would thoroughly recommend a video by Engineering Explained. Uh, yeah, uh, Jason is very good and he knows his stuff much, much more than I do. So yes, if you want to know anything technical, I would always direct you to Jason because uh, his channel is very, very good and easy to understand as well, which is really good. But anyway, enough about that. The brakes have got a more natural feedback than I was expecting. I've driven a few hybrids and EVs and because they have regenerative braking, get your words out, Aaron, I do often find that the brake pedal has got a really numb feeling to it. That isn't the case in this car. The brakes feel quite strong. Yeah, they feel natural and progressive. And again, well balanced and well judged. I think that's, that's an ongoing theme in the HRV. 
the uh, the engineering from Honda, it's just very finely balanced. This car would make Goldilocks very happy, I'm sure. So a lot of things are just right. The ergonomics, for example, they are bang on. I've had this car for almost a week now, and at no point have I struggled to use anything or reach anything. Everything is within reach. I've got proper physical uh, controls for the climate control. The touchscreen has got the new Honda Connect system, and thankfully it is so much better compared to the last system, but in all honesty, that is difficult. Um, in, in fairness, Honda could have just put an et Etch-A-Sketch up there, and that would have been better than the last system, to be frank. Of course, you can still bypass it with Android Auto, which uh, you can only use with a wire, or Apple CarPlay, which can be used wirelessly, or you can use a wire if you so uh, desire. I have noticed that, um, oh, RS3, I have noticed this week that, so I've got an, uh, an Android phone, I've got the S22 Ultra, and in my experience, it, it does often disconnect from the Android Auto, which is annoying because I'll be singing away to my favourite songs, okay, albeit singing badly, and then all of a sudden it cuts out. Maybe that's karma for me having bad singing, who knows. Um, but yeah, that has been annoying. But for the most part, the system is much more responsive. It's not laggy. It's um, definitely more seamless. Uh, and it is a, a very, very noticeable improvement on the old system. But to be fair, that wasn't overly difficult to begin with. My only criticism with the new system is that I would say it looks a bit aftermarket, if you get what I mean. And the... Uh, the clarity of the reversing camera is pretty woeful as well. I'll uh, demonstrate that when I can, actually. There's a lay-by up here. I think I've I think I've already passed it, haven't I? Never mind. But when I when I come to a stop, I'll show you the uh, reversing camera, and you'll see that yeah, the clarity is far from amazing. As you can see in front of me, I have a kind of hybrid of a cluster. So on the right-hand side. I've got a, a more traditional speedo, analog, although it does look digital when you first glance at it. And on the left-hand side, I do have a, a, a digital display, which can be toggled like so. Uh, so, where are we? There we go. You can change it to your heart's content. So, you can look, look at the power and the charge. So, as you can see, I'm charging, so I'm lifting off and getting regenerative braking. or I can look at the power flow so you get an idea of what's going on. So as you can see, it's in hybrid mode. So if you went, if you really want to keep tabs on what the car's doing, that's a good way of doing it. Range of fuel. And then, yeah, you get the idea. Oh, a flurry of traffic. Let's go back to what I had it on that, didn't I? The inside is a pleasant place to be. Okay, you do get harder plastics on the dash, but on the plus side, it means they'll be hard wearing. You get this nice cream strip helping to break up the sea of plastic, which is pleasing. Got this bronze detailing here, silver, chrome. And I do like the interior. I love this upholstery, by the way. Just look at that. Yeah, the, the upholstery is very classy. <sighs> sake i must admit that is very annoying and there have been uh sometimes more traffic there have been sometimes where i've been driving about town and the uh the lane keep assist has kicked in for no apparent reason now the new hrv not only is it the first of its generation to be part of honda's ehev lineup that's hybrid electric vehicle the first day i don't know what that stands for i think it's there just to be trendy but this is also uh the first to receive honda's honda sensing program so that's a a suite of safety safety systems so i've got autonomous emergency braking rear cross traffic alert blind spot monitoring adaptive cruise control traffic sign recognition and automatic headlights and 
auto high beam as well. I'm pretty sure that's all of them. I don't think I've actually missed any off, which I think is pretty impressive, doing that from memory. Now, despite all of these safety systems, which can be a bit annoying, this car was not able to secure five stars from Euro NCAP. Instead, it got four stars, so this is far from a death trap, but if you want a five-star rated car in this uh, genre, you will need to look elsewhere. Now, one more thing I want to speak about before I end the video is the air diffusion system, which may sound awfully technical, but it is a very clever and simple idea. So I'll just pull up here. No proper view of the South Downs today, I'm afraid, because I imagine that car park is going to be heaving, and what with the festival of speed, the traffic around there is not going to be even worth considering. But anyway, so you may see down here, you've got two vents, this kind of rectangular one here, and this uh, L-shaped one here, it's almost like a boomerang. Now, the idea is to stop you being blasted right in the face with either cold or hot air, this vent, it blows air around and above you, so you still get nice cool or hot air, but it isn't as intense or direct. Now, conversely, if you do want to have a more, so let me turn it up actually. So if you, that's too much. So if you do prefer to have a more direct stream of air, then you can twist this dial to the left, and all of a sudden, the air's coming more at me than, than opposed to being dispersed around me, or you can simply turn it off altogether like so. And before I finish, I did say I'd speak about the reversing camera. So pop it into reverse like so. And uh, hopefully you can see the clarity is pretty rubbish. That, that grass is all blurry. Um, that could be a dog bin or a post box, who knows? I know it's a dog bin, but I'm just saying, um, yeah, not very good clarity at all, but you can actually change the views like so. And you, you, you can also do that, so you can see the uh, front and rear parking sensors as well. And you can also change the um, the brightness. Uh, that's, the, that's the one we want, isn't it? Um, to quickly go through some features, um, I think I mentioned some of them earlier, but I get 9-inch touchscreen, navigation, smartphone connectivity, dual-zone climate control, heated front seats, heated steering wheel, wireless phone charging pad, uh, the drive modes I've mentioned, uh, you've got hill descent control as well. Got a button just there. Um, yeah, so you do get quite a bit for your money. Anyway, that's probably um, enough, enough talking from me, so it is time for me to end. I do hope you have enjoyed this video or found it useful. If so, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time, guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.